Simply learn. Your pace, your place. Hello, and welcome to Simply Learn's ITIL 2011 Capability Course on Operational Support and Analysis Certification Course. This is the introductory lesson provided by Simply Learn on Operational Support and Analysis (OSA). I am Alex, who will be with you throughout this e-learning session. This course consists of ten learning units apart from this introductory lesson. Therefore, it is important that you go through this lesson before accessing the remaining ten learning units. So, what are we waiting for? Let's begin with the introductory lesson agenda. We will first begin with the objective of this lesson, followed by a few recap topics that you might have covered during your ITIL foundation level. The topics we will cover are ITIL basic introduction, ITIL intermediate. And its relevant topics. This is followed by information about the Accreditation Institute, OSA course description, and its objective. We will then look at who can attend this course. Next, moving to the exam section, we will learn about the exam prerequisites, or say the eligibility criteria for attending this course, exam format, and the exam tips to help you achieve this certification. Lastly, we will look at the OSA course outline and the duration required for each learning unit, and details about the quiz provided by Simply Learn at the end of each learning unit. So go ahead and experience this courseware. The objective of this introductory lesson is to educate you on the courseware that Simply Learn offers, help you on how this online course works. Ensure that you are aware of all the topics and subtopics covered in this course. Let us move on to recap on ITIL basics in the next slide. ITIL is the most widely adopted approach for IT service management in the world. It provides a practical, no-nonsense framework for identifying, planning, delivering, and supporting IT services to the business. Adopting ITIL can offer users a huge range of benefits that include improved IT services, reduced costs, improved customer satisfaction through a more professional approach to service delivery, improved productivity, improved use of skills and experience, and improved delivery of third-party service. We will study more about ITIL under the topic Foundation Basics at the end of this lesson. Let us now understand ITIL Intermediate, which is the next level in ITIL certification. ITIL 2011 Intermediate Level is the next level after ITIL Foundation. ITIL Intermediate Level has a modular structure with each module focusing on different aspects of ITIL. They are service lifecycle and service capability. The intermediate modules focus more on detail-oriented study than the foundation level, and is an industry-recognized qualification. Well, on completion of your ITIL foundation and prior choosing this course, the thought on how one can become an ITIL expert must have crossed your mind. Let's get the answer to this in the next slide. Let us have a brief look at the ITIL certification path. The diagram in this slide is the graphical depiction of the ITIL certification path. ITIL certification path is based on credit point system. That is, you need to accumulate nine credit points at each stage till expert. ITIL foundation is the first certification which gives you two credit points on certification. On completion of the foundation level, you become eligible to appear for intermediate level, where you can choose from two streams: one, life cycle, and two, capability. The life cycle modules have all the standard five life cycle phases as exams, which provide three credits each. Capability modules are more focused towards implementation content, and have four exams, which provide four credits each. 
You can choose any one of the modules from either streams, or make a combination on the basis of your experience in the industry. Thus, at this level, the minimum credit requirement is 15. Once you accumulate 15 points plus two of foundation, that is 17 credit points, makes you eligible for third level. That is MALC, which provides you five credit points. Once you are certified MALC, your final score credit becomes 22. To become an ITIL expert, there is no separate exam. You need to accumulate 22 credits to become an ITIL expert. I am sure we are clear on the certification path. Let us understand the service life cycle and its modules in the next slide. The service life cycle modules. Are for candidates who aspire to handle a management or team-led role, which requires a broad management focus on ITIL practice areas. It is also for candidates who work or coordinate across teams or manages multiple capability areas. The different modules under Service Lifecycle are: one, Service Strategy (SS); two, Service Design (SD); three. Service transition, ST. Four service operation, SO. Five continual service improvement, CSI. Similarly, let's understand service capability in the next slide. Service capability modules are for the candidates who aspire to specialize in process level knowledge in one or more processes, which focuses more on day-to-day -day execution. The different modules under service capability are: one, service offerings and agreements (SOA); two, release control and validation (RCV); three, operational support and analysis (OSA); four, planning, protection and optimization (PPO). As we have an understanding of both the streams, let us understand the differences between them in the next slide. Here is a difference between the life cycle and capability. If you observe, you will see that life cycle is mainly phase oriented, whereas capability is process oriented. Also, life cycle focuses on individuals who work on the process, whereas capability focuses on individuals who are in the process. Take a few minutes to learn more about the differences on this slide. Once you're done. Move on to learn about MALC. Managing across the life cycle is the last step in achieving the ITIL expert certification. Therefore, it is mainly focused on individuals who want to become ITIL experts. On completing MALC, an individual can apply the ITIL knowledge, and it will provide skills that can be used in the workplace in a tangible way. We have already discussed on the credit system in the certification park slide. However, just to mention, the MALC certification gives you five credit points. Now let us proceed to look at the Accreditation Institute for ITIL in the next slide. The governing body for ITIL 2011 Foundation and Intermediate is the Cabinet Office, UK. Simply Learn is accredited by APMG and TUV as an ITIL foundation and intermediate training provider. Also, Simply Learn is an accredited examination center (AEC) by APMG, TUV, and Exen to conduct these exams. So, this has been our basic introduction on ITIL. Let us now focus on the OSA course description. An objective in the coming slides. The Intermediate Qualification Operational Support and Analysis (OSA) certificate is a freestanding qualification, but it is also part of the ITIL Intermediate Capability Stream, and one of the modules that leads to the ITIL Expert Certificate in IT Service Management. The purpose of this training module and the associated exam and certificate is. Respectively, to impart, test, and validate the knowledge on industry practices 
in service management, as documented in the ITIL Service Lifecycle core publications. Let's understand the objectives of this course in the next slide. The ITIL Certificate in Operational Support and Analysis is intended to enable the holders of the certificate to apply OSA practices in resolution and support of the service management lifecycle and specifically in the following key ITIL process, role and function areas. Event Management Incident Management Request Fulfillment Problem Management Access Management Service Desk Technical Management IT Operations Management Application Management We will discuss each topic in detail in the course outline. Let us now look at the candidates who can opt for this certification in the next slide. The target group of the ITIL Intermediate Qualification Operational Support and Analysis Certificate include, but are not restricted to, IT Professionals, Business Managers, Business Process Owners. Let's continue to discuss about the target candidates in the next slide. Apart from the candidates mentioned in the previous slide, the following candidates can also apply or attend this course. Individuals who require a deep understanding of the ITIL certificate in the operational support and analysis processes and how it may be used to enhance the quality of IT service support within an organization. IT professionals who are working within an organization which has adopted and adapted ITIL and who need to be informed about and thereafter contribute to an ongoing service improvements program. Operational staff involved in event management process Incident Management Process, Request Fulfillment Process, Problem Management Process, Access Management Process, Service Desk, Technical Management, IT Operations Management, and Application Management, and those who wish to enhance their role-based capabilities. Individuals who have attained the ITIL Foundation Certificate in IT Service Management and wish to advance to a high level of ITIL Certification. Individuals seeking the ITIL Expert Certificate in IT Service Management for which this qualification can be one of the prerequisite models. Let us now look at the exam prerequisites for this course in the next slide. To be eligible for the examination leading to the ITIL Operational Support and Analysis Certificate, the candidate must fulfill the following requirements. At least 30 contact hours, hours of instruction, excluding breaks and not including summary review time, with an accredited training organization, ATO, or an accredited e-learning solution, for this syllabus, as part of a formal, approved training course scheme. Two to four years professional experience working in IT service management is highly desirable. Hold the ITIL Foundation Certificate in IT Service Management or other appropriate earlier ITIL and bridge qualifications. It is also recommended that candidates should complete a minimum of 12 hours of personal study by reviewing the syllabus and the pertinent areas within the ITIL Service Operation Core Guidance in preparation for the examination, specifically service management as a practice. In the next slide, we will discuss about OSA exam format. ITIL 2011 Operational Support and Analysis Exam consists of eight multiple choice questions, which will be scenario based gradient scored questions. Each question will have four possible answer options, one of which is worth five marks, one which is worth three marks, one which is worth one mark and one which is a distractor and achieves no marks. The duration of the exam is 90 minutes. As a prerequisite, you need to have an ITIL 2011 Foundation Certificate or ITIL V3 Foundation Certificate plus Bridge Certificate and completion of an accredited course 
from an ITIL accredited training provider. It is a supervised exam and closed book. You need to acquire a minimum pass score of 28 right answers out of 40 questions or a score of 70% in the exam. The next slide talks about the exam tips. Here are a few exam tips that will help you overcome the examination as well as score good pass percentage. Please take a few minutes to learn about these tips on the slide. Once you have finished with the exam tips, move to the next slide on the OSA course outline. Let me give you an overview of all the learning units of this tutorial. In all, we have 10 learning units including the introductory lesson, which we will be completing in a few minutes. Let's look at the other learning units now. Learning Unit 1 talks about introduction to operational support and analysis. It introduces the various terms and core concepts of OSA, purpose, objectives, scope, functions and value to business is discussed in this unit. Learning Unit 2 is all about event management. This unit introduces you to event management interpretation and analysis, principles, techniques, relationships and application of these. This unit consists of design strategy, components, activities and operations including organizational structure and interfaces with other processes. Learning Unit 3 talks about incident management. This unit helps you understand the different components of incident management, its activities and interfaces with other processes, the measurement model and metrics used to support incident management within OSA practices. Learning Unit 4 introduces you to Request Fulfillment. This unit covers the Request Fulfillment process and how it contributes to OSA, a complete overview of the objectives, scope and importance of Request Fulfillment as a process to generate business value are explored. Policies, principles, concepts, activities, methods, request models and techniques are explained in relationship to OSA practices and information management. Metrics used in request fulfillment are also discussed. Learning Unit 5 is about problem management. Like any other learning unit, the purpose, objective and scope is discussed in this unit. The end-to-end -end process flow for problem management inclusive of problem analysis techniques, error detection, components, activities and operation including its organizational structure as well as any interfaces with other processes are included in this unit. Learning Unit 6 Access Management which discusses about the purpose, objective, scope and value to business, the end-to-end -end process flow for access management process inclusive of components, activities and operation including its organizational structure as well as any interfaces with other processes, a measurement model and the metrics that would be used to support access management within OSA practices and the benefits and business value that can be gained from access management as related to OSA is discussed in this unit. Learning Unit 7 talks about the service desk which includes complete end-to-end -end process flow for the service desk function inclusive of design strategy, components, activities and operation, as well as any interfaces with other processes or life cycle phases. The service desk validation components and activities such as service desk role, organizational structures, challenges and test components to ensure service quality within OSA are part of this unit. Learning Unit 8 is all about functions and roles. This unit discusses about various OSA functions which are technical management, IT operations management and applications management. It also includes design strategy, objectives, components, activities, roles and operation including its organizational structure and interfaces with other processes. The roles within each OSA process and generic roles are also part of this learning unit. Learning Unit 9 
is all about technology and implementation considerations. It talks about technology requirements for service management tools and where and how they would be used within OSA for process implementation. And lastly, the best practices that need to be adapted to overcome challenges and risks when implementing service management technologies. Learning Unit 10 is the last of the module which consists of summary, exam preparation, and directed studies. In this learning unit, we will summarize the material covered in the previous unit and prepare you for the examination. We will be conducting a mock examination as part of the delivery of this course. Let us now understand about the quiz questions given by Simply Learn in this tutorial. In this tutorial, at the end of each learning unit, quiz questions are provided by Simply Learn. This is to help you to assess your knowledge on completion of each learning unit. The question pattern would be an objective type with an explanation to the right answer, and each module will consist of sample case studies and sample test paper from APMG. Apart from these exercises, a glossary for your reference will be provided at the end of this course. Please note, to move from one learning unit to another, you need to complete these quiz questions with the right answers. Let us proceed to recap on some of the definitions and terms used in ITIL. The next section is on Foundation Basics. Well, this section is provided to help you refresh the learnings from ITIL Foundation. Here we will discuss about service, service management, functions and processes of OSA. Introduction to ITIL The picture on the slide depicts that each lifecycle phase of ITIL core is represented by a volume in the library. The core set consists of six publications and they are 1. Introduction to ITIL Service Management Practices 2. Service Strategy 3. Service Design 4. Service Transition 5. Service Operation and 6. Continual Service Improvement Let's study them in detail. Service Strategy As mentioned in the figure, it is considered to be the core of the service lifecycle. Service Strategy provides guidance on how to view service management not only as an organizational capability but as a strategic asset. Guidance is provided on the principles underpinning the practice of service management which are useful for developing service management policies, guidelines and processes across the ITIL service lifecycle. Service Design Service design provides guidance for the design and development of services and service management practices. It covers design principles and methods for converting strategic objectives into portfolios of services and service assets. The scope of service design is not limited to new services. It includes the changes and improvements necessary to increase or maintain value to customers over the life cycle of services, the continuity of services, achievement of service levels, and conformance to standards and regulations. Service transition. Service transition provides guidance for the development and improvement of capabilities for transitioning new and changed services into live service operation. This publication provides guidance on how the requirements of service strategy encoded in service design are effectively realized in service operation while controlling the risks of failure and disruption. Service Operation Service operation embodies practices in the management of the day-to-day -day operation of services. It includes guidance on achieving effectiveness and efficiency in the delivery and support of services to ensure value for the customer and the service provider. Strategic objectives are ultimately realized through service operation, therefore making it a critical capability. Continued service improvement. Continued service improvement provides instrumental guidance in creating and maintaining value for customers through better design, transition 
and operation of services. It combines principles, practices and methods from quality management, change management and capability improvement. Organizations learn to realize incremental and large-scale improvements in service quality, operational efficiency and business continuity. Well, we have looked at the publications of ITIL. Let us look into the definition of ITIL. What is ITIL? Well, to define in one line, ITIL is a set of publications for good practices in IT service management. Now, the next question you might have in mind or ask is, why do we need ITIL? As ITIL focuses on descriptive guidance on IT service management, that's easily adapted and emphasizes quality management approach standards. As you have understood by now, the goal of ITIL is to provide consistent, comprehensive, hygienic set of best practice guidance, provide a platform for independent discussion of processes in a common or say easy language, or standardized vocabulary. ITIL acts as a flexible framework which is adaptable to different IT environments and also complement other public frameworks. Best practice in the public domain. Why is ITIL considered as best practice in the public domain? Organizations operate in dynamic environment with a need to learn and adapt. There is a need to improve performance while managing trade-offs. Under similar pressure, customers seek advantage from service providers. They pursue sourcing strategies that best serve their own business interest. To cope with the pressure, organizations benchmark themselves against peers and seek to close gaps in capabilities. One way to close such a gap is the adoption of best practices across the industry. There are several sources for best practices, including public frameworks, standards of organizations and individuals. ITIL as best practices is considered over proprietary ones. Why is that so? Let us seek the answer to this question in the next slide. Good practices over proprietary ones. Why choose good practices over proprietary ones? Public frameworks and standards are attractive when compared with proprietary knowledge because of certain advantages. Proprietary knowledge is deeply embedded in the organizations and therefore difficult to adopt, replicate or transfer, even with the cooperation of the owners. Such knowledge is often in the form of tactic knowledge, which is inextricably and poorly documented. Proprietary knowledge is customized for the local context and specific business needs, to the point of being idiosyncratic. Unless the recipients of such knowledge have matching circumstances, the knowledge may not be as effective in use. Owners of proprietary knowledge expect to be rewarded for their long-term investments. They make such knowledge available only under commercial terms, through purchases, and licensing agreements. Publicly available frameworks and standards such as ITIL, Control Objectives for IT, CMMI, ESCM, SP, PRINCE2, ISO 9000, ISO 20000 and ISO 27001 are validated across a diverse set of environments and situations rather than the limited experience of a single organization. They are subject to broad review across multiple organizations and disciplines. They are vetted by diverse sets of partners, suppliers, and competitors. The knowledge of public frameworks is more likely to be widely distributed among a large community of professionals through publicly available training and certification. It is easier for the organizations to acquire such knowledge through the labor market. So far, we have looked at Introduction to ITIL, ITIL Publications, and ITIL as Best Practice. Let us now proceed to learn about service management, 
starting with the definition of service. What is service? So what is service? As stated in the Cabinet Office's publications, a service is defined as a means of delivering value to customers by facilitating outcomes customers want to achieve without the ownership of specific costs and risks. Services facilitate outcomes by enhancing the performance of associated tasks and reducing the effect of constraints. The result is an increase in the probability of desired outcome. In the next slide, we will learn about service management. What is service management? Here, we will talk about service management. The picture on the slide depicts the process flow of service management. Service management is a set of specialized organizational capabilities for providing value to customers in the form of services. The capabilities take the form of functions and processes for managing services over a life cycle with specializations in strategy, design, transition, operation, and continual improvement. The capabilities represent a service organization's capacity, competency, and confidence for action. The act of transforming resources into valuable services is at the core of service management. Without these capabilities, a service organization is merely a bundle of resources that by itself has relatively low intrinsic value for customers. However, service management is more than just a set of capabilities. It is also a professional practice supported by an extensive body of knowledge, experience, and skills. A global community of individuals and organizations in the public and private sectors foster its growth and maturity. Formal schemes exist for the education, training and certification of practicing organizations and individuals influence its quality. Industry best practices, academic research and formal standards contribute to its intellectual capital and draw from it. In the coming slides, we will learn about the roles and responsibilities of service and process owners. Service Management Roles – Service Owner This slide will focus on the service owner's role and responsibilities. Service owner is the person who is accountable for the delivery of a specific IT service. They are responsible for continual improvement and the management of change affecting services under their care. Example, the owner of the payroll service. Responsibilities Service owner's main responsibility is to act as prime customer contact for all service-related inquiries and issues and to ensure that the ongoing service delivery and support meet agreed customer requirements. Service owners identify opportunities for service improvements, discuss with the customers, and to initiate changes for improvements if appropriate. They liaise with the appropriate process owners throughout the service management lifecycle for effective and efficient delivery of service, and they also solicit required data, statistics, and reports for analysis, and to facilitate effective service monitoring and performance. Let us proceed to learn about the process owner. Service management roles, process owner. Here, we will talk about the role and responsibilities of process owner. Process owner is responsible for ensuring that the process is fit for the desired purpose and is accountable for the output of that process. Example, the owner for the availability management process. Responsibilities include assisting with process design and documenting the process. Process owner is also responsible for the process being performed as documented and make sure process is meeting its aim and also to monitor and work towards improvement of the process over time. Now we have understood the roles and responsibilities of the service and process owners in any industry for smooth running of the processes and functions, the responsibilities must be assigned to the respective owners. A RACI matrix is a right tool to assign the responsibilities. Let us look into it in detail. In the next slide. 
Connecting Process and Functions RACI Matrix What is RACI Matrix? How does it help in smooth functioning of the processes? RACI Matrix is a concept used for a distinct understanding of roles and responsibilities. The RACI model will be beneficial in enabling decisions to be made with pace and confidence. RACI is an acronym for the four main roles where R stands for responsible, A stands for accountable, C stands for consulted, and I stands for informed. Responsible is the person or people responsible for getting the job done. Accountable is the person who is answerable for the respective activity and there should be only one person accountable for each task. Consulted role are the people who are consulted and whose opinions are sought. And informed role are the people who are kept up to date on progress. Service provider. Who is a service provider? Service provider is an organization supplying services to one or more internal customers or external customers. Service provider is often used as a short form for IT service provider. There are three types of business models service providers, namely type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 is internal service provider which is embedded within a business unit, for example, one IT organization within each of the business units. The key factor is that the IT services provide a source of competitive advantage in the market space the business exists in. Type 2 is Shared Services Provider. is an internal service provider that provides shared IT service to more than one business unit, for example, one IT organization to service all businesses in an umbrella organization. IT services typically don't provide a source of competitive advantage, but instead support effective and efficient business processes. Type 3 is external service provider, which provides IT services to external customers, that is to say, outsourcing. The next key term that we will get introduced to is supplier. Who is a supplier? Another important keyword, or rather service provider frequently used in the IT service management is supplier, who is a third party and is responsible for supplying goods or services that are required to deliver IT services. Examples of suppliers include commodity hardware and software vendors, network and telecom providers, and outsourcing organizations. This marks the end of our introductory lesson. Let's do a quick recap of what we learned so far. In this lesson, we learned about what is ITIL, ITIL Intermediate, definition of service lifecycle and capability. We also got some information about the ITIL Intermediate Examination format itself and looked at the prerequisite of taking up the examination. Finally, we covered the objective, eligible candidates, OSA syllabus and foundation basics. Hope you have a clear view of how the tutorial works. Thank you and happy learning.